um, one more time here. So in Earth Science, when it opens up, if it opens up, there we go. Um, also, if you have not done the bus safety, so those of you that were here Monday, I still need you to just log in and, or just click on this and complete that form. You just put your name and put the two checks at the bottom and submit. Um, I have, oh, where did I put my paper? I have everybody, I think, I think everybody for the most part showed up. So just make sure that you've done that. You don't have to do it again. Just make sure it's been done. All right. We Last week we worked in getting started. To this week we're going to be in science inquiry. So that's where you're going to need to click. And I'm hoping all the links work. Um, you can get an idea of I need to modify these dates because it should end September 4th here, and I forgot to go back and change that. So your lessons, this is where you're going to go. So always for this week, we're going in scientific inquiry. Now we're going into e-lessons. Now I set the lessons up a little bit different, so hopefully it'll be um, a little easier. This module has, look at this, six different lessons, okay? Today and um, today and possibly tomorrow, we're going to be in this first one. Notice I have the dates above it. So we're going to click here. And now I've put what is to be done on each day. I've went ahead and put the two um, Google Slides that I'm going to talk about today up for those who are remote. Um, and so under Monday, here are the things that we're going to do in class. So you don't click ahead of me. Let me get through my explanation and then we will do them. There's a discussion question. There are two ed puzzle videos and there's a lab safety worksheet that you may or may not get finished in class. Okay. So we have time tomorrow to finish this up as well as to do these other two things here. And I will post the video I'm recording right now right here so that those that are working remotely or if you need to re-listen to it when you're at home, um, it's there. <clears throat> Questions about getting to this point in Canvas. All right. So you're going to click on, I'm going to give instructions <clears throat> before you actually do this. And I meant to go into student view. So let me go back a minute. And I want to go into student view. <clears throat> um, it looks a little more like what you're used to seeing if I go in student view. E-lessons. It's been running slow today. I don't know if it's because everybody's on here or what. Okay, lab safety and equipment. So we're going to go into discussion. <clears throat> when yours comes up, it should look like this. And it says, name a hobby or something you enjoy doing. It could be a sport. It could be something like cooking. It could even be schoolwork, carpentry. Uh, fishing, um, hunting, there's a lot of different things. So you're going to pick one of the, pick a hobby, and I want you to list as many possible pieces of equipment that you need to do that hobby. All right, so when you click reply, that's where you're going to type it. When, after you press post for your reply, you're going to read through the classmates that have posted it, and you're going to pick one and make a comment. And don't just say that's cool. You know, maybe you did yours on hunting and somebody else did it. And maybe you can say, oh, I also enjoy hunting. What is your favorite um, hunting season or something like that? Or maybe you play a sport and it's football. 
oh, what is your favorite football team to cheer for? You know, ask them a question or make a comment. Don't just say, oh, it's cool. So if you could go ahead and do that right now, go back here. All right, so once you've responded to someone's, you click back. And before we go to the Ed Puzzle videos, I'm going to talk about a couple things through the slideshows here. And, okay, good. I'm not going to present them because last time it kicked me out of my video program, so I'm going to leave it like this. Even though we may not uh, do a lot of um, working on labs in here, it's good to go over lab safety real quick. Um, just to get us thinking about things, universal safety signs. So universal means wherever you go, uh, these signs will mean the same thing. Can you think of any signs that are designed to keep you safe? Red, Red meaning? Hot or stop. Okay, hot or stop. That's good. All right, can you think of anything else? I think of road signs a lot. And... Um, I've been to other countries and road signs are similar. They may not be universal, but within the United States, they're universal, our road signs. So these are signs that you would recognize anywhere. Well, in science, we have signs and it's hard to see here, but these little symbols here will be, can be put on um, lab directions or on um, bottles or there are just various safety symbols that in the science world that you have to be familiar with. So here are just a few of them, especially goggles, apron. This means it's glass, it can break. Um, heat resistant gloves are needed, plastic gloves are needed. This means that you're gonna be heating something so you need to hold on, have the clamp to hold on to the test tube. Electric shock, so this would be if you're using something electrical. Physical safety. Uh, you see this a lot when they mop the floors. They'll put signs up to let you know the floor's wet. Um, disposable, uh, disposable lets you know if you can um, throw it away or if you need a special container to throw um, it away. Hand washing and just general safety awareness. So these are some scientific symbols, especially the ones here in red you might see. Um, Generally for science or labs, you would have um, goggles would be worn, depending, especially if we weren't using household substances. Um, if we were using more um, chemicals that you couldn't buy at the grocery store um, to protect your eyes. A laboratory apron is sometimes worn, when, especially when you're dealing with chemicals or heated substances. Um, long hair is always needed to be tied back. Um, so that it doesn't get into the chemicals or into the flame if we're using gas for heating things. And jewelry or anything that dangles if you lean over and could get into um, whatever you're working with. So I'm going to go through some other rules just real quick. Um, we don't fool around in the lab. We're going to need to follow directions, listen carefully, no horse playing, no running around, no being silly. Uh, because it can distract and cause folks to get injured. Um, we definitely don't eat in the lab. I know my third block is an exception when I have students here because we do eat lunch in the classroom now. But you never know what's been on the tables. The equipment is not um, sterilized. You definitely don't taste or eat anything that we do in, in the lab. Um, there's a special way to smell. We'll get to that. Um, if glass breaks or if you spill something, you have to report it to the teacher because um, we know how to clean it up and we'll take care of it and get it cleaned up correctly and it prevents you from getting any further injuries. So always report accidents. Um, wear all your safety gear. Um, locations of uh, safety materials. Fire extinguishers by the exit door. We have first aid material in the red bag that I keep behind the door over there. Eye wash is back here by the sink, uh, the sink back here. We do not have a safety shower and we do not have a safety hood. 
Um, if this was normal circumstances and we'd be working with partners, you'd want to make sure you respect um, each other as you're working together because science scientists are always working together and teamwork is important. This is probably most important. Even though if I give you instructions, you must also read the instructions. Don't rely on your memory of what I said in order for you to do your lab. Um, you've got to know what you're doing and understand what you're doing in order to do a lab. And if you don't, you need to ask. So just if you're working remotely at home, you need to email me, text me, do those one methods of contacting me so that you can get your questions answered. So even in class, you need to ask questions. It's very important. Always cleaning up when we're finished. Everybody's responsible and ending by washing hands. I know it's hard to see because I, I don't want to mess up the video by making it large, but there's some issues here with um, safety concerns in the lab. And so um, I'm going to just go ahead and click to the next slide because it points them out. And so this little fella up here, he's getting ready to pop a plastic bag. And so this is fooling around. And if he pops it, those that are concentrating, it could scare them to the point that they spill something or drop something or something gets on them. Um, this person's heating a test tube and it's pointing toward them. You never point something towards you that you're heating because if something pops out, it'll get on you. You tilt it away from you and not toward others. This uh, young lady doesn't have her hair up, so it could get into this flame right here, but she's also not paying attention to this flame. She just has it burning, and you don't do that. You just don't leave it unattended like that. This little fella here is eating while trying to do his lab, and that's um, not good. Here, he doesn't have safety goggles on. He's also pointing this toward someone else. I think it has a cap on it as well, so you don't heat a test tube with a stopper on it. Um, this one doesn't have um, glasses either um, on there. So you're going to have a where you've got to pick out some situations like this and determine what's wrong in the scenario. So that's sort of an example. So right here, what's something you can pick out that's not being done right here? All right, she's not paying attention, so she's getting ready to knock something over right here. You can tell it by here. Huh? All right, what's he doing wrong? All right. What's wrong up here? No safety goggles. What about her hair? Not tied up. There's trash here, so you don't, you don't want to keep you know, a lot of paper, especially if you got a flame, a lot of paper and stuff. All right, let's see about the next one. Here we go, if you can see it. He's getting ready to plug something in, and it, there's drops coming down here. All right, wet hands or wet cord. Are you going to plug something in like that? No. no. Um, this right here, you may not see it. Here's the stopper. This is open. Look how close to the edge it is. It could fall over. You always, if you're through with it, you plug it back up. You put the stopper or the cork back in it or the lid on it. Here, this is open again. You've got a knife pointing out. Somebody could walk by. What's wrong here? Safety goggles are here, not on his face. And then back here on the eye wash center, what's hanging here? A coat, so something's on the eye wash center. Um, let's see, I think there's one more. All right, here's another one. What's going on here? Trash, and what do we have here? The, the drinking, something there. And smelling it. You don't, you, it's called wafting. You're supposed to take and do your hand over the fumes and sort of bring it to you so you're not getting a direct inhale of the fumes. Um, not sure what's going on here, but I would hold the, the plug a little more sturdy because it's just a moving around to plug it in. All right, so you're going to have something kind of like that to do um, where you have some scenarios. And then you're going to have some written scenarios that you're going to have to talk about. So I'm just going to do a couple of these. 
The first one, Hal says that his teacher is solely responsible for preventing laboratory accidents. What's wrong with that statement? Why? All right, as well as the teacher. So everybody's responsible. I'm just going to touch on another one down here. Stephanie says safety goggles mess up her hair and give her raccoon eyes. She refuses to wear them. What's wrong? Well, some people can get raccoon Well, yes, but your protection of your eyes is more important than um, messing up hair and getting raccoon eyes. And she can also loosen them a little bit so they're not quite as tight. So she's got to wear them. And there's some other ones here um, that you, but you'll have some similar to this that you'll be doing. Um, the last thing I want to quickly go through is um, some lab equipment. Um, again, we've mentioned safety goggles, apron, and heat resistant gloves. So I like to always pull those in with um, lab equipment. And here are just a few pieces. Um, you'll have a sheet that you'll be dealing with with lab equipment, and some may be on here and some may not, so you may have to Google a few of the pieces. A mortar and pestle is this is where you chop up um, solids and grind it into a um, powder. Yes. Yeah. There are some people who still use uh, old-timey mortar and pestle to grind up seasonings and stuff like that for cooking. But this is used, um, sometimes you would see it in a pharmacy and that sort of thing when they'd have to make um, the pills into powder form to maybe make it liquefied for your um, younger children. But mortar and pestle. Watch glass is usually, it's like a little glass plate that's used to cover a beaker. Uh, these two we don't really use a lot in um, science lab here, but these we use. Um, if you want a precise measurement, so if I need five milliliters of a liquid, I'm going to use a graduated cylinder because I can measure precise amounts because of all these different graduate graduated marks here. Erlenmeyer flask looks like this, and it is for mainly heating liquids. Um, it, you can measure, but it's not going to be precise. Beakers tend to be for holding, mixing, heating, and measuring. Um, you can use this for some solids, but the issue is, again, with the measuring, it's not going to be as precise. So if you need something precise, you want the graduated cylinder or something that has more graduations on it than these that are spaced out. Um, these are three important pieces. Test tubes, if we had um, gas flame, Bunsen burners, then you might be mixing stuff in there, um, holding it with a test tube holder, um, or setting it in the test tube rack so that you can watch the chemical reaction take place. <clears throat> um, hot plate, this is how we would heat things here. We have a type of hot plate, um, so it would be electrical. If you were in a regular high school that has a lab set up for true chemistry, you would have access to gas and Bunsen burners, and you would need a um, ring stand with a ring and wire gauze to set your beaker on for heating purposes. Um, digital scales, I have a couple um, inexpensive digital scales here, but more we tend to use our triple beam balance when we want to find mass. You have a meter stick, which measures in millimeters, centimeters, and meters. The whole stick is one meter, and the numbers are centimeters, and the little individual lines are millimeters. And then thermometers, uh, Fahrenheit and Celsius, this would be one that you would hang up to get room temperature. Um, it would just be the glass thermometer if you were putting it in a liquid. And then a few things for transferring. You've got beaker tongs to help carry the hot beaker. Funnel if you're transferring from large containers to smaller so you don't spill it everywhere. A little spatula for transferring solid chemicals into smaller um, areas. 
pipette and dropper are typically interchanged, but a pipette is going to have measurements on it so you can measure out the exact amount. So when you were a little kid and you took liquid medicine, you had what they may have called a dropper or a syringe where they would suck out the right amount in, for you to take. Um, the pipette would do the same thing here. A dropper is just for dropping, one drop at a time, no exact measurement. So that gives you some ideas of the um, safety and the lab equipment. So in just a few minutes, you're going to watch the two um, Ed Puzzle videos, but I'm going to go ahead and show you the two worksheets. Okay. I thought it was 1245 that you left. Do you, can you check on that? Um, so, um, and you would need to look at these videos, um, Cameron at home, okay? Uh, let me show you the worksheet real quick, the safety worksheet. When you click on it, you need to do it after the videos. Um, when it opens, everything's moving slow. It's going to be just like we've done before with the PDF using Cami, but notice the directions. Do all of page one and even numbers on second page. So you're going to have colored pictures of scenarios, and you're going to answer the questions under it once it loads here. Um, oh, I got it. So you're going to look at these pictures, read the question, do what it says based on the picture. So you're going to do all of those. When you get to page two here, you're only doing the even. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. And you need text boxes. So you get a text box to get the text box. All right. And when you're done, remember your submit button is up here. And it'll bring a little window and you click the submit in there. Go back. And then I'm going to go ahead and explain the next one, but we'll, I'll explain it to you guys again, but this is more for my video. You'll have a lab equipment we'll work on tomorrow as the internet goes out. Um, it is also a um, PDF, but I have it use an interesting little tool um, where you need to get pictures off of Google. And there's a um, just where the T is on the side, there's also a button for image, and it allows you to choose G for Google search to find the image. So you're going to have to find an image for each of these um, pieces of equipment. So if you click on image and go down to Google search, when you click on it, you search for the piece of equipment. There should be a way to insert it, and you may have to make it smaller to kind of fit. Then you're going to answer the questions down the middle and on the side. Again, you'll submit up here and return. And um, for those that are working at home, you have a reflection question that you're going to be doing. I want it all in one video. So at tomorrow, we'll be doing this, those of you that are in class. So you'll create your own um, unsafe lab scenario and post it. And then um, you'll respond to someone else's by picking out what is wrong. And then they'll respond, letting you know if you're right. So you'll have two responses this time on here. All right, so back to this. What we're going to do the rest of class, for those of you that are here, is you're going to you listen to the Ed Puzzle videos and hopefully start on the lab safety worksheet. Um, so if you don't get a chance to get to the lab safety worksheet, we'll have time to work on that in class tomorrow. But I wanted to get all of this in for um, those that are working remotely in the video. So let me stop this.